Tarai Raox, bonjour. Vous êtes euh, une chanteuse irlandaise, vous avez fait vos études à Dublin et puis vous avez été un moment en troupe à l'Opéra de Munich. Qu'est-ce que ça vous a apporté, cette expérience de la troupe So I was very lucky indeed to get to study in Ireland, but when the opportunity came to do a young artist program, an opera studio in Munich at the Bavarian State Opera, the Bayerische Staatsoper, I took it with both hands because to learn not just how to sing, but everything that happens behind stage, under the stage, how other people learn and study and rehearse, it was really like an internship within the industry. Um, I was in Munich for 10 years, which was long enough to do 47 role debuts, everything from the very, very smallest role up to the things I sing all the time with my barbieres and chenarentos. Um, so it was a really formative experience and one I enjoyed immensely. Alors, parmi tous ces rôles, il y a bien sûr des rôles italiens et je crois qu'ensuite, à travers le monde, vous avez chanté un rôle qui a été important pour vous, Cendrillon, Cenerentola de Rossini. Quelle est la différence pour vous entre la Cendrillon de Rossini et la Cendrillon de Massenet Well, I was very lucky to begin with the Rossini Cenerentola um, because it was really versatile for the voice. It was really healthy. Um, uh, and it set me up very well, I think, with a beginning to understand the character. For me, Massenet takes such a very special approach, not just to the vocal writing, but also to the relationships between the family. And for me, the big difference here is that we see each and every character as a real person. There's not just anger or, or bitterness. There's some beautiful moments between Cendrillon and the two sisters. Um, some beautiful, beautiful moments between her and her father. And none of these happen, or they ha happen very differently in the, in the Rossini. I find, for me, when I was studying this, it was a much more emotional journey to go on. Um, I can also say that during the rehearsals, there were many days where in the middle of the singing, the tears just ran down my face because it was... It's just so beautifully written and so very honest. Um, and without all of the coloratura and all of the extra cadences, Massini writes in a way that we have to be very vulnerable, not just vocally, but also emotionally. And for me, that's been really, really brilliant to experience. Alors, on comprend bien la différence psychologique. Et la différence musicale, qu'est-ce que vous apporte euh, dans la compréhension du personnage la musique de Massini For me, what's incredibly interesting in the writing is that although he uses from the very bottom to the very top of the voice, he spends a huge amount of time right in the very center where I speak. So in the most honest part of my voice that I have. And he demands all the time emotional honesty, musical honesty. Uh, the, the big difference, of course, there's amazing romantic lines in this. It's incredible. I've never got to sing such beautiful duets, for example, with the prince, or also the duet with the father in the, four, in the third act is just stunning. Um, and so it's, it's really a different approach altogether, already from the overture. It's totally different. And although the action is busy and there's much to be done, especially in this wonderful production, it's really important that all the time I'm honest with the voice. And I'm really glad that he wrote it that way because it means you, you must always give the honest emotion. Alors, vous avez dit, justement, dans cette production, euh, parlez-moi de cette production. Qu'est-ce que vous a apporté le travail avec Mariam Clément? Oh, she is a dream, <laughs> an absolute dream. Uh, we hadn't met before. So when we arrived here on the first day, it's like the first day of school. Everyone's a little bit nervous and will we all like each other and will it be fine and am I well prepared and how is the French and, you know. Um, first of all, in my opinion, she's a genius. She can speak about five different languages to the whole troupe at the same time. Um, she works in a very beautiful and calm way and it was really a process of us all getting to know each other and trying to bring the strengths of each person forward. Um, what I love is that she didn't avoid cliche, but was really careful to make sure that we, instead of just floating along the top, that we really dug deep to see what each character had to offer each other. Um, and for me, the best part is that she's helped me discover this really special relationship that I can have also with the sisters, which I had never, ever thought about before. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience to work with her. Alors justement, elle vous a fait croire à votre rêve. Est-ce que la morale 
de cet opéra, mm -hmm. c'est qu'il faut croire en ses rêves, comme aussi y croit Cendrillon. As a singer, you have to believe in your dreams every single day. <laughs> and this role, this character is somebody that I have known since I was only a, a child, <laughs> you know, somebody that I have grown up with, that I knew about, that I've got to explore. And I have dreamed, I mean, this particular contract has been years in the making. I have known about this dream for such a, such a long time. To s debut this role in Paris in itself is a huge dream. To learn the music and know it fits the voice, massive dream. So the fact that they're all coming together and coming true, of course, of course you have to dream and dream really big. Eh bien, que ce rêve continue. Et après ses débuts à l'Opéra de Paris, on attend de vous y revoir. Merci, Tara Merci. Herhardt.